guy. What's up? How are we doing? What's going on? Doing good. Uh, nice rainy day here in New York, so I wish it was better, but you know. Yeah, it's a little ugly. This weekend was yeah. nice, though. I got to catch up on yeah. Saturday. I got to my first Mets game in almost two years. Wow. Yeah, that August 2019. Feeling, huh? yeah. was like, it was great, dude. I like Because oh, yeah. they had just upped the capacity, too. So it was oh, around yeah. 30,000. Yeah. And wow. It was it was fun, dude. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously the fact they won helped, but Stroud yeah. was great, and yeah, a couple of homers. It was a great time. Cool. So. Who they played? Uh, San Diego, right? It was San Diego. Yeah, it was against Musgrove. Yeah. Okay. Um, wow, yeah. that's a good matchup too. Musgrove's been good this year, like we talked about. So Musgrove, cool. Stroman, yeah, that no, was yeah. a good one. Lindor went yeah. deep, so oh yeah, it was a good okay. weekend though. Yeah. Yeah. Hey man, anytime one door goes deep, that's a good sign. So hey, he's seeing up. Frankie's seeing yeah. up. So yeah. Uh it's awesome. Yeah. Well, Still uh, the Yankee game yet, but um, you know, I'm trying to get to go to one soon. Dude, I'm sure tickets are dropping a little bit with the way they're playing. Yeah. So you might uh might be working in your favor. Definitely could. Well, uh, we'll we'll get to that in a little bit, yeah. But uh give yeah. me um give me something you liked this past week. All right. Well, I was kind of like our our new division rival, like the Rays. Uh I guess like we're have a rivalry with Boston, but Tampa Yeah kind of no, loses how it takes out. So yeah. uh pretty funny in the the Rays Astro series though. Uh Brett Phillips, we all know his antics, man. He had that big head in the World Series. Um he laughs all weird and shit. I don't know if anyone's seen that or not, but he was on intentional talk once and it was pretty funny. But um, so he got hit by a pitch and he acted like he was going to charge the mound and he was joking around. But like the umpire almost came out and was like <laughs> trying to like stop it. And then like they were all laughing and shit. So uh, no, he could, the ump had no idea it was a joke. <laughs> he looked pretty serious, but yeah. Um, no, that was, so funny. That I, was I pretty funny that. to me. It's yeah, that was like pretty. That's pretty good. Man. I, I thought yeah. that, like the umpire part was the best part because like he literally thought it was gonna be a brawl or some shit. So I that was like awesome. We haven't seen a brawl in a while. I feel like the last <laughs> couple of years there's definitely been some. I don't know about this year. I feel like there was one in Cincinnati with Castellanos. Right. Right. Okay. But yeah. That might be like the only one I remember. Maybe there's. A, I feel like there was another. Maybe, but I don't know. There's yeah. not been as many as usual. That could be because of COVID too, but you know. True, know. true. Yeah. Yeah. But what do you got? What was your favorite thing you saw? So out on Friday, you might have saw. So DeGrom's out there. He's killing it. And then he leaves. He was, he had, I think, a no hit bid into the fifth or something. But then he leaves after six with tendon, some tendonitis thing, in his arm. So. Okay. The, the, I don't know if you follow the Clem report. He's like a bar stool writer, and he yeah, summed up yeah. like perfectly what it is to be a Mets fan. So he wrote this after the ground with the game. He said, "Mets fans went from trying not to jinx a perfect game to searching WebMD about right flexor tendonitis in less than an hour. It's never easy. <laughs> I have never seen something better describe what it's like to be a Mets fan. <laughs> That's nuts, man. Oh my god, it's a roller coaster. Dude, it's <laughs> it is it is man." I mean, like the Grom's ERA is like 0.5 something right now. And you're still worried about shit like that. It's just like, man, Bro. you shouldn't have to worry about that at all, man. But like, you got to No, this is, <laughs> this is the life we have, but it's okay. I'm, I'll live with it. Yeah. yeah. Getting into, uh, like it. yeah, no, it's, it is what it is, but getting into uh, who's hot, who's not, who you got this week for hot. <clears throat> uh, this week I got uh I got Starling Marte on the Marlins. Um, he's hitting 500 over the past seven games. Uh, he's got two homers, five RBIs, four stolen bases. Um, he scored eight runs, too, so he's doing a lot on that leadoff spot in Miami. Mm -hmm. And um, he's got a 1.29 OPS. So, uh, you know, he's playing like the way we've seen Marte play in the past. Um, obviously, he went through those steroid issues a little bit ago, but I think yeah. he's proven that that's – that didn't affect him a ton um, because he's still been a good player. So, uh, and again, I mean, you know, the standings are what they are in the NL East. No one's really going to be selling, I would say. But let's say Miami falls out a lot. Marte is an obvious trade piece for a lot of teams, including the Yankees. So this is yeah. probably increasing his trade value a lot. I've, I feel <laughs> like you forget about Marte being in Miami because he was a like an all-star, yeah. I believe, in Pittsburgh, or at least close to it. He was. Yeah, no, he was an all-star multiple times. And um, then he played in, like, Arizona last year in the beginning of the year, I think. And then he got traded to Miami at the deadline. But, right, I mean, right. people forget, man, he was, like, a big reason why Miami made the playoffs last year in the expanded mm. format. 
because yeah. they made that trade and like Miami really wasn't supposed to contend last year and he was a big reason why they uh they did some things and they they beat the Cubs so like they actually did something in the playoffs which is yeah. kind of interesting. If I if I had to guess I'm going to say they ship him out at some point just cuz I don't think they're going to hang with either the Mets or the Braves or the Phillies but Yeah. I mean, yeah, he's helping uh he's increasing his trade value like you're saying so. Yeah, again, we've talked about that on at least too. It's like a month from now, Miami could be in first somehow. Oh, so, yeah. You know, we never know. No, anything so can happen. It's, it's, anything's possible. <laughs> Who yeah. you got for yours? Um, I got to go with Vladdy. So, Vladdy on the on the Jays now. His last 15, 380 band average, five five homers, 14 RBIs, 1227 OPS. I feel like I could have gone with, like, three different guys on the Blue Jays with the way they're hitting right now. I mean, even just yesterday, eight home runs Yeah, with all of them. But – I mean, he's up to he's up to twenty now. He's leading the league in home runs, Vladdy. And I mean, yeah, gotta be the front runner for MVP in the AL. Gotta be, man. Um, yeah, he was hitting some tanks this past week. I saw some of them. I was like, man, you gotta be kidding me! Like, um, but he's that I mean, it, that game in in uh, Boston yesterday was like ridiculous. <laughs> it was like bad in practice. <laughs> yeah, like at that point, just give up like that's when you see a position player i don't know if boston put a position player in or not to bench but i think they brought in a reliever and he gave up like 11 runs like i, I think they're guys honestly at that point they're just oh, like man. f it just stay in there and get some outs yeah they're like man you gotta you gotta take this for us <laughs> that sucks uh, no but, that you, you hate to see it for that guy but yeah I dude mean, vlad i i hope that toronto makes the playoffs too because like He'd be so much fun to see play like deep into October too. I obviously all of them though. Like Teoscar Hernandez was hot this week too. I saw, um, dude, and they're like doing this without George Springer, right? So they're, that's their main, even their crazier. big signing has just not played. <laughs> yeah. And like, dude, the, the other thing about it too. Remember their other big signing was Kirby Yates, and like oh he right, 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 because he had Tommy John. So like the two signings they made to like make their team better haven't even played, and they're still hitting like this. So yeah. Uh, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> I, I think they're a contender. I mean, they just got to pitch like average, honestly, and then yeah. they could contend. So, and hey, man, they make a trade for like a starter at some point, maybe that'll help mm. them out a ton. So, uh, because like Ryu's been great, but you know, other than that, they don't really have a ton of good starters. So, we'll see what happens. Right. Yeah. Um, Who you got for slumping? So, slumping, I got, uh, I had someone who's actually just coming back from the IL. So, I don't know. It's kind of cheating to say this, but hey. I'm thinking him because he could be on the trade block if the Giants fall out at some point. So, Brandon Belt, um, mm. last seven games, hitting 150, um, three for 20, .442 OPS, no homers, no RBIs, nothing like that. So, uh, damn. But hey, Giants are still in first place, man. So, somehow, uh, somehow. And, uh, you know, again, like we've talked about, I think they're going to trade some guys at some point and Belt's a free agent after the year. So, mm. you, want, you want to see him pick it up a little bit. So, maybe he helps out a contender at some point. Um, right yeah we'll yeah. see how long the giants keep it up but i'm not yeah. terribly optimistic about that so uh, not not really you got for uh i'm gonna go with javi Baez now his last seven he's three for 28 one homer 321 ops that being said cubs are doing fine without him i mean they're just coming off a sweep yeah. of the cardinals but javi's been slumping yeah man javi's streaky we know that so uh yeah you know, like like we talked about last week. How remember last week I was saying Adam Duvall was like doing pretty shitty and shit. Right. And we were like, he's gonna bounce back this week. I'm pretty sure he hit like four or five homers or something. Um, Sounds about you right. You can literally you can see Baez doing the same thing next week. So yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> it's we'll kind see. of who he is. But I guess it comes up enough yeah. hitting besides him where yeah, they, can, man. they can live with that. That's crazy, man. They're tied with the Brewers for first right now, actually, too. So um, not what I was expecting. At this point, I really thought the Cubs would be selling everybody out, but hey, yeah, if they could, if they could hang on for one last run with those boys, man, I think they're going to try to do it. So. Yeah, I could see it. All right, so talking trades again. Um, give me, give me an AL trade you could see happening. So uh, this one obviously is going to depend on where one team ends up in the standings a month from now, but it seems like the Twins, man, are just not digging out of this hole. Um, they. Yeah. We just won two out of three in Minnesota. We should have swept, but Chapman blew the last game uh, in the ninth. But I think being Nelson Cruz is on a one-year contract, it would only make sense to trade him at the deadline. And um, 
you know, obviously it's a DH, so this kind of narrows it down to only AL teams. But um, I think the Tampa Bay Rays should get Cruz, man. I think that makes Ooh. sense. Um, it doesn't necessarily fit what the Rays have been trying to do, but, like, they haven't won the World Series doing it. So mm-hmm. maybe go a little outside the box here, get a guy you could plug in at DH every day, and see what happens because – Tampa doesn't have a set DH. And, um, yeah, you know, listen, Cruz is on a one-year deal. Like I said, he's getting paid $13 million, So the Rays would probably have to pay about $6 million to him, I'm assuming, unless Minnesota ate the contract. Mm-hmm. So that's not necessarily out of their price range either, I don't think. Um, it's more than they would usually spend. But yeah. if you were in the World Series last year, you're currently in first, have the best record in the league, like we're going to talk about a little later on. Yeah. Um, you got to go all in. And I think they – that's possible. Um, plus, Cruz is having a great season out there in Minnesota. He's really one of the only guys in Minnesota that is. Uh, he's hitting 288, 13 homers, 31 ribbies. Um, and most other AL East teams have a monster at the DH spot. Like, the Red Sox have JD. Um, we have Giancarlo Stanton. Right. Uh, <clears throat> Blue Jays have Vladdy and Teoscar kind of split in time. Rowdy to less sometimes, too. But, um, you know. Listen, Cruz has a track record like we know, too. Um, he never changes. Guy, kid's going to be 41 yeah. in next month. Yeah. I um, think, no, that, that sounds like, honestly, a great pickup for Tampa. Yeah, I think money will be the only thing just because they're so cheap. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I think that could really put them over the top in the AL. Um, but, yeah, I mean, if they, if they made this move, I honestly could see them going all the way. Um, and like a, that hurts as, as a Yankee fan. But, um, yeah. With the fact that we just can't figure out how to hit a baseball right now. Um, and ah. the Rays seem to know how to do everything. I, I mean, yeah. I want to talk about them more in a little bit and yeah. how well they're doing. Because honestly, I didn't even realize it before like this yeah. morning, how well they're doing. But it'd be um, a good pickup. I think, too, they would look at it from a perspective as Cruz being a leader. Because, like, he's an obvious leader in the Twins clubhouse. He's an obvious leader everywhere he's been. So, I think he'd help out some of those guys. And Cruz has a ton of playoff experience. Right. Um, not just with the Twins. Back with Texas, he was in the World Series once. Oh, yeah. Um, maybe twice. I don't remember. But um, he was in the playoffs with Baltimore that one year. He played there. Obviously, the four years in Seattle, he wasn't in the playoffs. But, um, you know, I just think it makes sense, man. I really do. And uh, That's a good I, point. I don't want to see this happen. but. As a baseball fan, I do. As a Yankees fan, not so much. <laughs> yeah. No, that's a good point because I don't know who on the in Tampa Bay lineup you could really rely on the playoffs to be like, oh, they're going to really be consistent for me. I mean, last year you had a Rosarena. I don't. Yeah, and that was like, you can't expect that from him again. <laughs> no, but you could expect something similar from Cruz because you know he's done it. So, yeah. I like that. That makes I mean, he, sense. Back in the day, man, I've seen him homer off David Price in the playoffs against the Tigers that year. Um, oh, yeah. He's had big homers. Like, he's played good in the playoffs, too. So, uh, we'll see, man. I don't know. This is kind of outside of Tampa's mold, but you never know. Yeah. No, we'll see. What yeah. about uh, National League? Who are you looking at? Oh, National League, I got you guys acquiring some people. Um, the Mets. Okay. Uh, so, I got you guys acquiring Charlie Blackman and John Gray from the Rockies. Um, hmm. I don't know if it would happen, but you guys have had a ton of injuries, so it kind of makes sense. Oh, um, yeah. No, we could use the, the pitching depth. Yeah. Absolutely. Listen, I mean, like, Syndergaard, Conforto, and Nimmo are all on the IL, as you know. So, uh, uh, so is McNeil. He hasn't really played the outfield much this year, though. So, uh, I, I don't really count him in that category. But, look, Gray, Gray is actually currently on the IL, but he's uh, set to return, I think, within the next week or two. So, uh, okay. not too far away. Um, right now, he has a 4.29 ERA, but... That's a little bit of a course effect, I think. So yeah. if he's pitching at City Field, that probably lowers down to maybe even if it's high threes, that's a solid starter. So four point um, two for a Rocky yeah, starter is pretty good. That ain't too bad. Um he would and again, he would be like the four or five starter with you guys because DeGrom, Walker, and Strowman are already pitching pretty well this year, all three of them. And Luchesi and Peterson have not. So um no. you know, Luchesi's think, been a little better recently. You no, know, you almost look at this too, and it's like Maybe the match trade shouldn't have happened, but um, I think I don't know. no. It, it makes sense to me because I don't. I think you have Carrasco and Syndergaard coming back, but right. you don't. You don't really know what to expect from them, and, and that's also Syndergaard, not going to be anytime soon. 
So Syndergaard just had a setback, right? Like, yeah. isn't Syndergaard going to be out for a while now? Carrasco, I feel like, will be closer than Syndergaard. But um, listen, man, a, a rotation, though, with DeGrom, Walker, Stroman, you got Carrasco filled in four and then Gray five. I mean, Gray is considered the one or two in Colorado right now. So, yeah, um, he's got good you know, stuff. Yeah, he's been good. Um, and again, I think his numbers on the road have been way better than at home. So he's going to be good. Um, mm. And he's a free agent after the year. So he's not really the cost issue. Blackman is a free agent after 2023. So you should have him for the next two and a half years, which is why I don't know if the Rockies would trade him, but they're not trying to compete right now. So no, they don't really have a reason to keep him. Um, and listen, Blackman has, is having a better season this year than he did. Um, he's, he's hitting 280, four homers. 34 RBIs, 785 OPS. So, um, yeah, you know, you'd, you'd hope, you'd wish that kind of the power was more so being he's playing in Colorado, but mm-hmm. um, you see he's driving in runs with 34 RBIs. So, uh, you know, and Blackman can play all three outfield spots. Um, obviously, you guys just made that trade for Billy McKinney, I think, who's playing center field for you every day now. Yeah, but um, he's been solid. He's been good. So, you know, you plug Blackman into right field and you got Dom Smith in left right now until Conforto and, Mc- and uh, Nimmo come back. I mean, I don't know. I think that's pretty good. And, like, then you have him for the next couple of years. I just don't know how much you'd have to give up, obviously. It could it could be a lot right. because of that. I don't know. I don't, I'm not positive he'd be a star now fielder once everyone comes back, once you have Nimmo, right. Conforto, Dom. Honestly, yeah. even like Pilar and McKinney have been like pretty good. So, yeah. well, I mean, regardless, to have some some more depth for yeah. some playoff time potentially. Never know. I but. mean, yeah, you could, you know, you gotta hopefully that Conforto and them don't stay hurt. But there's always going to be injuries. So, like, if there's not, you got one guy, either Blackman or one of the others, is going to be a pinch hitter in the playoffs. So, yeah, um, and obviously Blackman has a little bit of playoff experience too. Those couple of years that Colorado was in it. I mm-hmm. don't know his numbers off the top of my head, but I think he did okay when he when they were in the playoffs. Um, plus, it might do him honestly. It might do him some good to get out of Colorado. The wear and tear playing out there every day can really uh, get to you after a while. So yeah, I don't know, man. We'll see. I mean, I think you guys are still in first, and you guys are playing good. A trade like this could help you guys out a lot. Yeah. No, I so. I think we could really, use, especially from a pitching standpoint, someone to back. Yeah. DeGrom, Walker, and Stroman. So, yeah. see, good help. All right, for what it seems and not what it seems, we'll talk a little more teams this week. So, we were just talking about the Rays. Let's go back to them for a second. So, currently the best record in baseball, the Tampa Bay Rays, on pace for 103 wins. You know, obviously they're coming off the pennant last year. They had the fourth best run differential. So telling you like they're pretty legit in those wins. And now 26 and 16 against over 500 teams. That's the second most over 500 wins right behind Houston. So is it what it seems and not what it seems that they are the best team in baseball? I mean, I can't go against them right now. <laughs> I, I can't. I mean, the Yankees have a hard enough time playing them. And like you said about the above 500 teams, the run differential is there. Like, I don't think they should be, but I do think it's what it seems that they're the best team right now. I don't know, man. I, I just think they, they got their own thing going on, man. I don't know what it is. It works. So, I don't know. I think it's what it seems because everyone in that clubhouse just seems to gel. And um, yeah. even after the Adamas trade, they're still all gelling because, like, he was a big part of that. And, like, it was almost like you could have been worried after that happened. Like, is that going to fuck up the clubhouse at all or anything? And like, they've almost gotten better <laughs> since that. So honestly, yeah. I don't know. What do you think? I think, I think no. I, I think clearly by record right now they are. But as yeah. far as like, are they actually the best? Um, I would still take. I would still take the Dodgers. I'm tempted yeah. to say San Diego too. I, I know they're slumping right now and the Mets just beat up on them a little bit. I, yeah. I still think they're better talent wise. And in the end, they're going to be, they'll be ahead. I mean, still credit um, to them, but also like dollar for dollar. I mean, dollar for dollar. They're the best. Wow, right. Like that payroll yeah. is like, I think second lowest in the league. So credit yeah. to them regardless for how well they're doing, but yeah, man, it's like, you know, you look at some of the other like teams that you think would be better than them. Like, even like the White Sox, maybe, or the A's. Yeah. <laughs> or the Yankees, honestly, we were supposed to be. Yeah. Um, and like, somehow we're not. And like, they're just doing their own thing. But like, and like, 
again, they're doing this without Blake Snell and Charlie mm-hmm. Morton. They're both gone. And, like, they're still somehow doing this. I, it doesn't make sense to me, but, like, no. every time you try to make sense of something the Rays do, you can't, and it just works. So there's not really a way around that. They're kind of like the A's in that, where they just do, like, these yeah. weird things, but it never seems to matter because they're always good. But they're like that on steroids, I feel like, because they've, <laughs> they've really, for the last, like, decade or so, been consistently good. They have now, and like, you no, know, now they've made the playoffs since every year since 2019. I think maybe 2018 they made it too. I don't remember. Kevin Cash, I don't, I'm not too fond of him, but he's doing his own thing, man. And he's managing, he's like the perfect manager for the Rays, I think. For whatever reason, everyone seems to enjoy playing behind him. And also with that, like, Joe Madden left and stuff back in the day. That was kind of strange, too, because he fit so well in Tampa. I don't know, man. I just think they they got their own mojo, and it ain't going away anytime soon. So. Yeah. No, credit to them. Yeah. Currently killing it. But yeah. switching over to uh, L.A. So the Los Angeles Angels now. Probably about two weeks ago, we were riding them off, saying, oh, here's another yeah. lost season for them. Yeah. Now, though, so they've won eight of the last 13. They're over 500. So they're, good. they're third in the AL West right now. Only four games beyond Houston for second and six games beyond Oakland for first. Doing this without Trout, who is going to be out, like we said, until at least the All-Star break. Yeah. And Anthony Rendon giving them, like, almost nothing so far this year. Yeah, he hasn't done much, man, at all. What are your thoughts on them? Are they – is this hot streak what it seems? Are they a legit team? Man, I don't – I'm going to say no. Listen, I mean, if Trout comes back and they're hovering around 500, I guess – it's possible. I don't know. I just don't see the pitching there. Do you, yeah. I don't know. Like, Otani's been great, obviously, but um, Bundy hasn't been the same guy he was last year. He hasn't been horrible either, but mm-hmm. um, you know, Andrew Heaney isn't great. Um, I, I, you know, I can't even think of any other starters on their team. No, like, I, I really can't <laughs> off the top of my head. Um, maybe they have – didn't they get actually Alex Cobb or something – I feel like he's actually been okay this year. I think they traded Baltimore. Hmm. I don't know who else, man. But what do you think? I don't know, man. I don't. I just can't see it. No, I can't either. I, I think, like yeah. you're saying, unless they make a trade, um, which we could potentially talk about next week for our trade section. Yeah, but... I mean, I, yeah. If if they got a starter, do you think it would help? Like, I, do you think it could actually push them up? Like, I think I think they could slip in if they got like a a top starter. And, I mean, then you have Trout coming back. Yeah. You have to think Rendon um, at some point is going to get it going. He's yeah. just too good not to. Rendon's got to heat up, I guess. I don't know. I just – I think that Houston and Oakland are just miles ahead of them talent-wise. You know, I, I know that, like, Justin Upton has been having a better season. David Fletcher has been okay. I think Jose Iglesias has been a good signing or a trade, whatever they did um, to get him. But it's just not having Trout right now. I know they've been hot recently, but that could also – change the next week and they can lose like five out of the next seven games so because like not having a guy like track your lineup if Rendon's not hot that's mm-hmm. tough so See, Ot- I don't Otani can't carry the whole team I don't even know if they're miles behind talent wise honestly like when I look at Trout, so? Rendon Otani I mean yeah I guess on the pitching side you're right that's I the, mean you thought Iglesias thing. was yeah. be better and he's yeah. not been like the closer, yeah, he hasn't been too good. I don't know. It's like obviously I want to see the Angels in the fucking playoffs. Everybody oh, does, yeah. but I don't know. I just think that like Otani, like knock on wood, but like he's had a lot of injuries too in the mm-hmm. past. So you really cannot afford for him to get hurt at all because then you then you're done because you don't nah, have yeah, a starter and you don't have your DH. So I don't know. We'll see if they make a trade though. I don't know. Yeah, to be determined. Um, so now we're just going to talk about one player instead of a team for not what it seems. Um, we're talk about Yasmani Grandal. Um, he's having like one of the weirdest seasons in MLB history, I think. Listen to this stat line right here 10 homers, 23 RBIs, 807 OPS. That sounds about average for him, right? That's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. But his batting average is 157. Like he's having a great year, but like, the, the hits, like, the batting average just isn't there. I don't know what's Is he just on. getting on base a lot? Yeah, so he, he currently actually leads the AL in walks with 51 walks. I mean, I <laughs> it's weird, man. I don't know. I just – I feel like 
this is like the weirdest stat line because like now it's been two and a half months. Like, you know what I mean? It's not like yeah. this is like a month in. Like, he's been doing this the whole season. And like, he, he's helping the team. I mean, he's getting on base a lot. 10 homers isn't bad for a catcher so far. No, that's but pretty. Like, what do you think? Is this what it seems or not what it seems? Like, I don't know. I mean, in a way, no. I don't know, I... man. I just don't know what it is. I, I have to think at some point he's going to go over the Mendoza line, go over 200. But I don't know. Yeah. I, personally, I've never been a huge ban average person. I've always thought on base was a little better of an indicator. But no, no. I – Yeah, me too. Yeah, I, I guess this is kind of who he is. I mean, yeah, like I said, I don't think he's going to be banning in the 150s. But, yeah. Like, he's had a few seasons too, man, where like yeah, – I think he hit like 220 or something like that or hit like low 200s. and um. Like, he's had the numbers. So, like, if he could just crawl up there, I think it's fine. Like, but, you know, can a team like the White Sox live with a catcher who hits below 160 the whole year? Hmm. If his on base is there, I, I mean, it's possible, I guess, but that's tough. I don't know. I mean, it's clearly not holding them back too much right now. But, yeah, no, it's, a, it's a good point. Come playoff time. Yeah. When you need someone to get hits. Yeah. Plus, I think, like, they kind of had a security blanket last year when they had – your guy now, James McCann, was there also. They were kind of sure, splitting time sure. with Grandal and McCann at, like, DH and stuff like that. And now Grandal is, like, the guy. So, uh, I mean, he's got a track record, too. So, I think he's not going to hit 157. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> like, I don't think it's possible. So That's an interesting stat line, though. I, I was really yeah. not following him. Huh. Yeah. I kind of – I saw something about it the other day, and then I was looking up, like, in, deeper into the numbers, and I was like, man, that's fucking crazy. Like – he was a guy, man, I would always try to pick for fantasy, too, because he's a power-hitting catcher. I mean, like, yeah, and, uh, you know, he's he's a great player. I mean, he played great for the Dodgers for all those years, had a good season in Milwaukee before he joined Chicago. Um, so, you know, I think his numbers will be back to what they usually are by the end of the season, for sure. Yeah, no, agreed. Okay, for <laughs> a little deeper dive now, let's talk spider tax. So this story kind of started to expand almost right after we recorded last week. So that's why we weren't talking about last week. But yeah. um, so since the seasons began, began, MLB has been collecting thousands of baseballs, inspecting them, and the majority of them were found to have an illegal substance on them. So specifically, spider tack is one of them that's been listed among pitchers. So yeah. Josh Donaldson is saying, this is going to be the next steroids of baseball ordeal because it's cheating and it's performance enhancing. So, these substances can add 400 to 500 RPM on a pitch, just increased spin rate, um, which is, is you've seen like the average spin rate go up significantly <laughs> for pitchers now. Um, then getting back to last Tuesday, Garrett Cole was asked about it and gave a very awkward 15 seconds of silence <laughs> when he was asked if he used spider attack. And he said, I don't know how to answer this question. Have you ever used spider attack? while pitching um i don't i don't know i i, I don't know if uh i don't know quite i don't quite know how to answer that to be honest um so i mean kind of telling yeah. you he's been using it I, there was <laughs> one player i'm forgetting who said yeah basically 95 percent of pitchers i i face use it yeah so now I mean, league ban average is the lowest it's been since 1968. Teams teams are striking out just under nine times per game. It's highest in league history. So, and then last little bit before I'll, I'll, I want to hear your thoughts on this. So the New York Times' David Wallstein is saying that in the coming days, MLB is expected to issue new guidelines and protocols to enhance enforcement of the existing rule governing foreign substances on balls. Offended pitchers will most, most likely face an increasing array of penalties from ejections to fines and possible suspensions. So curious to hear what you think of this whole debacle. I mean, man, like, first of all, just touch on Cole quick. Um, obviously, that was not what I wanted to see as a Yankees fan. Um, that was not good. But um, it was a little funny, though. Like, Cole did have a good start. Yeah. Like, the next day. Yeah. Like, he pitched one of his best starts of the year against Minnesota. Um, and he struck out Donaldson twice. So, mm. uh, listen, I'm a fan of JD, but, but shut the fuck up <laughs> because you didn't get a hit against him. So, uh, if he's not using anything this time, didn't matter. 
But um, anyway, I mean, I obviously they just need to become more strict with it. I think like you can use this and you can't like there's no hiding shit on the, the glove. There's no, you know, touching the brim of your hat. There's no none of that shit. Like if you see that you're suspended, that's it. You've already seen some minor leaguers get suspended uh, yeah. because of this. Um, you know, I don't know, man. Obviously, everyone's using it, but like, either say then what you can use and what you can't use. Like, make it crystal clear for everybody. Um, because you know, obviously, guys getting suspended in the minors. Every manager now is telling their guys they can't do anything. They're like, guys, like cause a lot of managers probably don't even know who's doing what. But I know that like the Yankees announcers were talking about like Aaron Boone probably going into the dugout and being like, all right, guys. Whatever's going on, anything is going on, you got to stop it because you're going to get caught and something's going to happen and you're going to be suspended, whatever. So, um, you know, obviously this year it's been affecting. We know that the dead and balls might be an issue as well. But um, 237 league-wide batting average is not entertaining. So, no. Uh, that's what I, that's what I think about that. But um, And then, interesting enough, this past week, the average spin rate was 2360 that was the lowest it had been all season so it's almost as if like the guys using it were like oh shit all right now we gotta we gotta cut this out that's what i'm saying i feel like every manager was like all right guys cut it out like he can't do it anymore um, i mean it kind of makes sense and I, like we were saying all season like what why is hitting just like sucked and like is yeah. it then ball is it just like the level of pitching talent which again it, it's par- probably partially both of those but yeah. Like now we're seeing it's just a huge advantage. I mean, the freaking NL Cy Young race, I think I, I looked this morning, it was like 15 guys like under ERA of like 2.5. I mean, yeah, guys, we talked about like we talked about Gossman, Woodruff, Burns, DeGrom, obviously. I mean, but like I feel like the race is not not like two guys. It's like 15 guys, like you said. Right, so, yeah. Like, and like obviously the, the NL pitching will – already be better because pitchers hit so like that's already a guy to get out easily pretty much most of the time unless you're jacob Degrom, who's gonna get a hit every time he's out but exactly um, <laughs> i you know i just I, it's not I'm, like we're diehard baseball fans so like we're gonna watch no matter what but for someone like getting introduced to the game or like a kid getting introduced to the game who let's say enjoys hitting more than pitching will be so bored watching games sometimes. And mm-hmm. that's not good for the sport. So uh, I think I think this season they're kind of just going to keep evaluating it, maybe hand out some penalties, not sure. But, like, I think next season where you're really going to see, like, a crackdown. Like, they're kind of yeah. going to let it go this season. And then, like, next season you're going to see, like, yeah. hitting rates go up. You're going to see, like, yeah. much more enforcement of what you can put on the ball. So yeah. – I think especially because of the CBA and stuff that's going to be this offseason, sure. they got to do all the new rules and shit. Like, I think it's just, it makes more sense to just figure everything out after the year. Um, but I also, you know, again, like if you're increasing spin rate and shit like that from illegal substances and like you hit someone in the face or something, like because whatever, like, I don't know what mm. would happen, but like that, we've talked about how hitting people can ruin their careers or whatever. Like, if you accidentally hit someone because of something like a spin rate, like if it's a two seamer end or something and the spin rate was higher, so it moves more and it hits them or something like that. Like that's not good either. So, uh, yeah. Well, the inverse of that is if pitchers are saying like it helps them control, actually, I don't know if pitchers, I think we kind of just know that but like it helps yeah. them control it more. Yeah. So honestly yeah. you could argue it could lead to less hit by pitches too Yeah. by using the substance, but yeah, I, I could see it either way. Yeah. I think that that's the issue right there is that we don't know what substances can do what to the ball. Mm -hmm. So like they need to just say, you can use this and you can't use this and they need to be strict about it. I think because then there's, there's no like take the gray, the gray area, like out of it. You know what I mean? Just make Mm -hmm. it, make it black and white, nothing in the middle. Like you can do this and you can't do this. That's it. Like, I don't know. I guess my other question too, like obviously Cole gave like a pretty, pretty poor answer to that question but like have other pitchers been asked that question too and maybe have the answers just been better or well, they've not been asked that question like i don't know i know that like obviously bauer has been asked or talked about it at certain points um i, I don't know like 
you'd think that like, oh, I know that some Mets players were asked about the Grom or something, and they all said he's like not obviously he doesn't need to or whatever. But yeah, I, I know on Twitter someone someone had inferred that Degrom was using it, and like eight <laughs> different Mets were like, no, he's definitely not. Yeah, but like. Yeah, I, I feel like it's it's a little unfair to Cole because he's kind of yeah, become no, like the poster child was. of this. And yeah. like, are, yeah, if we're going to ask him, let's ask other top starters that they're using it too. Ask I don't just to keep it fair. I mean, even ask, ask DeGrom to his face. Like, yeah. ask Woodruff, ask Burns, ask all these guys we're talking about. Ask, you know, how are they not asking a guy like Kershaw or like, you know, a guy who's yeah. been around that long? Like, or I don't know. I just, it does seem like they were kind of, shoving it to Cole for some reason it's like dude you yeah. know give him a break I mean I know he's like on the New York Yankees and he's our ace but like still yeah. I don't well, know honestly I'm less interested in like Cole and DeGrom's answers than I am like yeah someone who just recently got good who just recently increased their spin rate yeah. so that's why I think Bauer is more interesting I'm trying to I, yeah, I was gonna say Bauer um you know a guy like Corbin Burns or Brandon Woodruff I mean like not that I think that they're doing anything, but like they have gotten good just very recently. And Burns got good all of a sudden after having a year where he like had the highest ERA in the league. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's interesting so, too. Not saying yeah. they're using it, but I'm no, just more interested no. in their answers than like I, a, too, a I, would, I would love to like hear what they say about it because like I don't know if everyone's going to have the same stupid answer that Cole had or if everyone's yeah. going to have a more, like, in-depth response. So, I mean, I think at this point, everyone saw what happened, so they're not going to answer like like he did. But, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, I don't know. And again, like, not that we're saying anyone's using, but, like, no. I know that most pitchers probably use something. So. Mm-hmm. so, I mean, it's an ongoing story. Maybe we'll have an update next week, maybe next yeah. month, but – I mean, it's a. I'm just waiting to see if there's going to be a suspension of a major league pitcher at some point, because there still hasn't yet from this. I don't know if they're allowed to yet. I don't know if they were just testing it out in the minors or not, but. See, that's just a slippery slope, that, but... though, because if you really yeah. think that many pitchers are using it, you can't just suspend one or two guys, and then you got to like really crack down. I feel like it's like it's all or nothing. You can't like do a couple people. Yeah. <laughs> And like pretty soon we're gonna see all fucking triple A rotations in the league because everyone's getting fucking suspended. Can you imagine? <laughs> I mean, yeah, we'll keep we'll keep coming yeah. back to this as it updates, but this is yeah, the sit right now. Yeah, all right. Well, to... speaking of pitching, um, <laughs> going into the best performances of the week, probably the best was Anthony Discofani on yeah. a few days or three days ago now against Washington, yeah. complete game shutout, two hits, one walk, eight Ks. A little bounce back for him because he had like we said, he had been having a great season and then slumped a little yeah. bit, but he looked fantastic. Yeah, that was against, like, a Nats team that's kind of been doing a little bit better than they were, too. Soto's hitting again, so uh, it's, that's pretty cool. Um, again, like, he could be a potential trade piece at some point, so, uh, you know, good for him, though. Yeah. Um, on the 10th, Zach Wheeler versus the Braves, eight innings, four hits, no walks, no runs, 12 Ks. Yeah. I mean, he's starting to really establish himself. After. I think he's coming into his own, man. Especially uh, Nola is kind of having like a weird season too. He's not as good as usual. So uh, yeah. Wheeler's really stepping up as the ace over there right now. So no, it's it's looking like a pretty good sign, especially for what they signed him. I want to say it was like maybe like 20, 20 mil a year, maybe a little more. I think so, it was like a, about that. Yeah. So he's looking worth it right now for for the yeah. Phils. Yeah. So. Uh, June 11th, Aaron Saval versus the Mariners. Eight innings, one hit, one walk, no runs, 11 Ks. I mean, the Indians' rotation just looking deep. And, like, their rotation is looking awesome, and Seattle's offense is not because it just seems like every week we talk about someone almost no-hitting them or something. Yep. So, uh, plus, I think that Kyle Lewis actually just got placed on the IL with, like, a hamstring yeah. injury or something so that's another offensive player that's not around yeah um, so you know indians rotation though bieber was great like this week too i don't remember exactly what the stat line was but he was good like police actually is not there still because he's still recovering from ripping his shirt off that time. i forgot about that yeah yeah <laughs> um but oh, you know down. yeah <laughs> bro well um that same day Jacob DeGrom versus the Padres. 
only went six innings because he left with the tendonitis bullshit. Yeah. Um, but six innings, one hit, no <laughs> runs, no walks, 10 Ks. Drove in two runs because, of course, he did. Yeah. Of course. Um, so he I – mean, Go ahead. What's the zero right now? 0. 0.56, I think. Something. something like yeah, I, I should add that, too. Yeah. That is now – it's something like 0.56. That's the lowest ERA yeah. through 10 starts in history. <laughs> is it in history? Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. nuts, man. I don't know. <laughs> and then the last little one, I, I just remember at the top of my head, he now has more RBIs in on the season than earned runs given up. Yeah. Yeah, so I think the the, the number was he has five RBIs and four runs given four up. Four earned runs. Right. Yeah, that's insane. I mean, I don't, it, it's, it doesn't even make any sense. Like, it's a video game, dude. He's like a video game pitcher. I don't know. <laughs> and, and, you know, even as a Mets fan, I want to, like, obviously this is not a Mets-Yankees show, but, like, my God, yeah. he's ridiculous. Like, And yeah. I, 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 I think I still take it for granted, like, just being a fan <laughs> of that team that he goes yeah, out there think, every day, yeah. goes, every fifth day. I think you just become accustomed to it. I'm like mm-hmm. – Like, let's say this year at some point he has a blow-up outing, like – potentially where he gives up like four runs let's say something like that yeah like we're all going to be shocked like but but like if if anyone else that happened to once in a while it's like i don't know just had a bad start but like to grum we're going to be like man what happened like is he okay (laughs) you know no legit it's just like not something you expect and then getting into injury for a second he is expected to be back I believe yeah. this Wednesday. I don't, he's not I expecting he's, this yeah. to start. So, which is no, which, yeah, he, he shouldn't. I don't think so. Yeah. So, that's going on in Queens on yesterday. Joe Ross for the Nats, eight innings, yeah. no runs, no walks, nine Ks. And then that same day, Carlos Rodin taking a, a no hitter into the seventh, almost pulled two in one season, but got <laughs> broken up on a, on a, like a, Deep fly ball was almost caught. I don't know who it was, but he just missed it. Yeah. But his final line was seven innings, one earned, one walk, nine Ks. Yeah. Um, I mean, Rodon is honestly becoming, like, insane this year, too. So, uh, you know, that's crazy. Um, yeah, Joe Ross, like we talked about the Nats rotation a little bit. Um, he's kind of – that's a better start than what he's been doing. So, um, he's been better this year. Uh, so. You know, it's pretty interesting. I think um, he, could he be a trade piece, Joe Ross? I don't know if, if the Nats mm. kind of fall out again. Like that NL East is what it is, but um, potentially he could. I don't know what his contract situation is though, but um, I think it's possible that you see him and Scherzer shipped out, possibly if the Nats aren't there. So yeah. Um, side note, I think I mispronounced his name once again, Rodon, not Rodin, <laughs> Jesus Christ. But I mean, dude, yeah. the, but that White Sox rotation though, with him and Lynn, is yeah. like solid. And, uh, Giolito has been better too. So that, there's, yeah. a, there's a reason why the White Sox are in first place in the central. And I don't think that's going to fucking change anytime soon. Um, I mean, they're primed for a playoff run, even with La Russa, that whole situation. I mm-hmm. think they're still... <laughs> They're still I playing mean, good, so it's quite a down. Yeah, other since yeah. the uh, the, the Euroman Mercedes incident, I feel like you haven't really yeah. heard much since. So, no, not really. Um, I mean, I, I think all the players have their own opinions, like we talked about, but um, obviously they're not really letting it affect them on the field as of now. So, uh, you know, good for Rodon, I think. Yeah, getting into uh, injuries quickly. So probably the biggest one the past week, Max Muncy going to 10 day IL with the right oblique strain, but yeah. he's expected to join the team on the road trip this upcoming weekend. So nothing too serious, um, which is good for them because he was killing it. Yeah. He's having an unbelievable season for them. Yeah. You know, he's having like kind of a weird year too. I feel like his OPS is like through the roof, but yeah. his batting average isn't there. But like, again, I- how much do we want to pay attention to batting average? It's not that important. He um, did that last year too. He had a terrible. Yeah. I, I feel like he was like low two hundreds, yeah. but he was still just walking a ton. Yeah, I mean, yeah. His walk rate is like absolutely unreal. Like I think he has the highest walk rate in the National League. I know Grandal has it overall, but I think uh, once he has it, like in the in the NL. Um, I mean, it's crazy. Like, do you think he's going to start the All Star game for the Dodgers or no? Probably because, like, should, right? Because, like, Fred, Freddie Freeman is having an okay season, but his batting average is low, too. 
I think I think think Muncie could. I know Jesus Aguilar on the Marlins is actually having a good year, <clears throat> but Muncie could easily do it. So I feel like it. Sh- I mean, unless I'm missing someone, I, I feel yeah. like it should be him right now. Yeah, I feel like it's definitely. I feel like it's gonna be because like he's a Dodger, so like more people True. know him than like other guys too, mm-hmm. and that's kind of what goes into the vote to begin with. But yeah. um. Yeah, it's not that he doesn't deserve it though, because I, you know, I think he definitely does if he does start there. So, yeah, so he'll be back soon. Yeah. Sire Lee for Dodger fans, taking yeah. it to you guys for a second. The Bronx, Luis Severino had a setback in his rehab start. He injured his groin in the second inning, so not sure when to expect him back. Um, and then Luke Voigt began a rehab assignment yesterday, which was Sunday the thirteenth. So. Hopefully he'll be back in the next week or two. I hope by like next week, I'm assuming he's going to probably play like all the games this week in AAA or wherever he's playing him. And I just like the Severino thing is way more important, I think, because he was going to come back, man. And like mm-hmm. he was, he was recovering well. And I, uh, I saw what happened. It, he was with like the high A team, the Renegades. Um, and he fucking threw a pitch, man, and you could just tell if something happened. He could barely walk. I mean, he needed guys coming out. Like, yeah. two trainers came out to help him walk off the field. So, you know, I, man, he was just like, it's been so tough for him, man, like, not pitching last year really at all. Um, and now this, it just sucks. And uh, I hope he gets back soon. But, listen, we're not playing great to begin with. So, mm-hmm. Voight coming back is – obviously important too um i was gonna say that i think from like a performance uh, standpoint it's gonna help obviously but then also like an energy <laughs> wise just to kind of yeah, like man, yeah. provide a spark in that clubhouse because that, that's again, that's who he is like, so yeah well, i mean we we kind of just went into minnesota last week and we won two out of three because the twins suck mm-hmm. because then we just got swept by the phillies this weekend so yeah. um you know boy it's just such a important part of our clubhouse that like not having him around i just feel like is a negative effect on us but um yeah we'll hope that he doesn't have any fucking setbacks because the way our season's going it also wouldn't surprise me so it's time to, it's, it's time to heat up in the bronx but <laughs> i mean shifting over to queens for a second jeff mcneil began a rehab assignment yesterday sunday um should be back within the week i feel like i haven't seen him in forever. Well, I feel like I haven't seen yeah, about half yeah. the team in just know. <laughs> forever now. But I mean, he'll be yeah. he'll he'll be big. Um, yeah. For us. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. And then who you mentioned earlier, John Gray, he will throw yeah. a bullpen session today, Monday, and should yeah. be activated from the injured list soon. So a little reinforcement yeah. in Colorado. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, obviously, it's going to be a welcome sight to get McNeil back. Hopefully, he can turn the season around a little bit. Um, he wasn't doing relatively no, he good. Was, but, he was pretty poor when he was there. You know, I, I think, like, I think Neil's track record the past couple seasons kind of speaks for itself, I think. So I think he should turn it around. Um, yeah. And, you know, hopefully there's no more raccoon situations or whatever. Oh, my God. It, that feels <laughs> like so, so much has happened this season. Like, that was yeah. probably one of, the, like, the seven, like, <laughs> weird incidents that have happened on that team. But, yeah. I don't know, man. Guys have stepped up. V- uh, yeah. VR, Peraza, McKinney, like just these random ass guys. And like yeah. with with McNeil out, with Conforto out, with I don't even. I feel like I'm just. Yeah, yeah. It, it all it almost seems like um like this is what the Yankees did back in like 2018. That's or a 19. good comparison. That, 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 like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. whatever year it was that like everyone got hurt for our team. Like Judge was out. Stanton. Like, I think almost everyone was out, and like. That was when Gio Rochella broke out and like Miguel Uhar broke out. Mm-hmm. Um, guys like that, Void even Luke Void. That was when he broke out and like true, true, yeah. Um, because like Greg Bird was supposed to be our first baseman that year, and then Luke Void became the guy. <laughs> I forgot about <laughs> uh, Greg. <laughs> yeah, man. But like you know, it, it's like let's say McNeil does struggle. A guy like VR is playing pretty good, so. You know, and like he has a track record, though. Obviously, VR has played for a lot of different teams, but and helped him out. But yeah, you know, still, I don't know, man. <laughs> Be a welcome sight to have him back, even just from yeah. an energy standpoint. And like we're kind of like we're yeah. saying with Void, McNeil's somewhat the same way. So yeah, definitely. Be, be good to have him back. But yeah. and then talk about uh like series upcoming this week. What are you looking forward to? 
Um, uh, well, I'm looking forward to one that's going to be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, four game set. Um, it's between the White Sox and the Astros in Houston. Um, I think that'll be a good series. Uh, obviously, two pretty good teams this year. Um, yeah. So, you know, I think also maybe the first time the White Sox see the Astros since everything happened, not that they were really involved in the cheating or whatsoever. Yeah because uh, they were in the other division and they weren't in the playoffs that year, but still, that'll be interesting. Um, obviously there's going to be some guys like Yasmani Grandal that was on the Dodgers when they lost uh, oh, right, some other guys right. out there. So there's going to be some bad blood kind of there. Um, so I think that's going to be kind of interesting to see what happens with that. I think, yeah, I think the other part too is like Houston has a great offense. And like we were saying, the White Sox have a stellar pitcher right now. So we'll see. Yeah. It'll be a good matchup. Yeah, and, like, Houston's pitching has gotten better, too, and the White mm. Sox offense is good, too. So, uh, you know, all around it's just going to be a great series, I think. That's a solid uh, series. I like that. Yeah. Probably, and it's four-game set, so, like, that's a that's a good one, man. Four games yeah. in Houston, so uh, that's going to be interesting. No, definitely. What do you got? What do you got? I'm going to go with uh, starting today <laughs> through Wednesday. I work on this on right. Monday. Angels at A's. So, I mean, we're saying we just said the Angels are heating up. A's, I believe, are still in first. And, yeah. I mean, so, I mean, important matchup for the Angels if they want to make up ground. So. And then you see a sweep from L.A. Then do we take mm. it serious? <laughs> I mean, that would make it interesting. I mean, I, yeah. I think they'd at least – they'd want to take two out of three. But, yeah, that would yeah. – I mean, they're right back in it then. So. Oh, yeah. That should be uh, – that should be a good one, man. Some good series out west. It's going to be good. Yeah, no, truly. Yeah. Yeah. And then wrapping up stat of the week this week. So I don't know if you've seen this one. Walker Bueller now, he has not lost a start in 22 starts now. And regular season. If you if you throw in um postseason, I believe the number is closer to about 29. So yeah. obviously not doesn't mean everyone's a win, but he just hasn't lost in 22 starts now. The last time he lost a start was September of 2019. Wow, that's that's nuts. I actually think now I think I was at that game because I think he played the oh, Rockies because yeah? I was looking it up earlier. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was at Dodger yeah. Stadium. I think he lost against the Rockies, but I mean, you look at them. I, I think his ERA is in the the mid twos right now, so having a great season yeah. for them. But weird, weird statistic. But I mean, I would say the other thing too is I'm not huge on wins and losses as like a stat, but if it's yeah, that yeah. long a stretch, I think it shows you how good he's been. Yeah, I mean, it, it at least shows you that, like, he probably hasn't gotten blown up much. Like, yeah. Like, maybe, maybe a couple times, but it was a no decision because L.A. came back. But, um, yeah, that's, I mean, Walker Bueller has been great this year, too. Talk about Cy Young candidates. Um, yeah. He's right up there with the best of them. So, uh -huh. uh, you know, he's a big reason why L.A. is still up there. I think they're only a game behind the Giants right now, too. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel like I feel like Bauer's taken a little bit of a step back recently. Kershaw's been iffy, but Walker, yeah. honestly, the whole season has been pretty solid. Yeah, definitely. That's a weird stat, though, honestly. Yeah. So yeah. that wraps it up for us. We'll be back next week, and take care. Yep. See you guys next week.